Welcome to today's 3D print. One of my viewers wants to import a file. Well, he wants to modify a file. He has two files and he didn't make them, but one has a feature he needs. The one he can use doesn't have that feature. So I'm going to show you how to make basic modifications to a file in Tinkercad. So stay tuned. So my victim he wants to take this file here. It's a set of rims for an RC car. And it seems that these rims have a hole in the center that he needs, but he can't use these. This is the rim he needs, but this rim lacks the hole. So I'm going to show you how to bring these into Tinkercad to add that hole. So one moment while I download the files and unpack them. So here are the files. This is the one we need but these two have the hole we need. So we're gonna figure out how to figure out what size hole is in here, and then we're gonna add that hole to this file. One moment while I import both of these into Tinkercad. In Tinkercad, you go to this import button up here. So that's gonna be up here in the corner. It says import. And then you have a box in the middle here where you drag a file. So we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna grab the file we want and drag it inside. It's gonna give you the dimensions of the file and the scale, and you just click import. Give it a moment and it will import that. We're also going to have to import the file that has the hole we need. You could just print it out and measure it, but I'm going to show you how to do that in Tinkercad. So here we have the two files in Tinkercad, and you can see this one has a hole in the middle that this one lacks. So we're going to add this hole from this model to that model. First, for whatever reason, this model is upside down. So basic manipulation stuff, you click on the model, and you have these little rotation dials here. Well, if you grab this little rotation dial right there, if you stay, if you stay inside this ring, this ring right here, it'll move in increments of 45 degrees. If you move outside that ring, it'll give you fine movement. Since we want to rotate it 180 degrees, we're going to stay inside that ring so it'll snap correctly. So you see here, Click, click, see, 22.5, 45, 67.5, but if you go outside, you can make one degree movements. We want to make fixed degree movements, so there you go, 180 degrees. Now they're both facing the same way. So we're going to figure out how to get the hole out of this model. And you have the ability to place work planes, and that's how we're going to do this. So up in the upper right hand corner here, click work plane and then drag that work plane over here. Now you notice it's going to start shifting around and moving based on where you put it. Well, what we want to do is we want to put it on that inside flat surface there. See how it's on that flat surface now? Just like that. And now my work plane is there. I'm going to grab my cut box, which is that tool right there. And I'm just going to chop away the entire top of this model. And highlight them both you can grab a bounding box so if you see I'm clicking on an empty area down here and I drag a bounding box over both parts it selects them both make sure you do not select anything else you can also select one part hit the shift key and then select the other part we're just going to use the bounding box since that's all we have and when you merge whatever they intersect gets cut away then we're going to do the same thing again another big bounding box to delete the entire object except we're going to grab this center dot right here. You have this arrow, which allows you to drag this entire box up and down. And then you have these little corner boxes. These black ones allow you to adjust a single axis, while these white ones will drag both axes. The white one in the center here allows you to shift this thing vertically like this. See how it's getting thicker and shorter? Well, I'm just going to invert it and go down and get the whole thing. And then I'm going to come back here and I'm going to grab that little black triangle right in the middle there. And I'm going to drag this down, but not all the way so that I'm creating basically a washer right here. Okay, but I'm getting rid of the rest of the model. Again, bounding box, select the entire thing and merge. And what we have left is this little washer. Actually, I missed a little bit. So if you come back in here, drag that out a little more, merge it again. Now I have this little washer. Now this is where it gets interesting. I'm going to take a cylinder and put it right here. But let, before I do that, 
let's make this taller first. So now this allows us to move it up and down. This allows us to make it bigger. So we're gonna make it a whole lot bigger. And then we're gonna turn this into a hole. So up here, you can make it a solid or you can make it a hole. So we're gonna turn this into a hole. We're then going to grab a cylinder, anything, any shape really, and drag it in here. And you can left your right click mouse button will allow you to drag around and change your point of view like that. And we just want to make sure the cylinder is all the way inside of this shape. Okay, so this cut tool that we made covers the entire cylinder and there's no gap in here. If you need to, you can grab the little triangle here. You can move this up and down. See, I don't want it sticking out. So you want it all the way inside. It's not sticking out the bottom. It's not sticking out the top. It's all the way inside the meat of the object here. So that when I merge them, I'm basically going to turn this orange cylinder into the exact size of the hole that was in the center of this object. Do that. And... Bingo! Now we have this little cylinder. Well, guess what that cylinder is? That cylinder is the exact size of the hole, and now I know how big it is. 12 by 12 millimeters. So it's a 12 millimeter hole in the center. Now, we don't have to do anything else to make a new cylinder, because we might as well just reuse this to put our hole in this object. Very, very easy. Bring this object over here. Bring the cylinder down, so it intersects the object a little bit just sticking out the top like that. Now, I'm gonna put my work plane back on the bottom. So if you go up top here and you grab the work plane and you just drag it to an empty area out here that's not on top of anything, it puts your work plane back on the floor where it was originally. This way it's out of our way. We need to center this. Now thankfully, our cut tool is a circle and this object is a circle, which means I can just center these two. I'm changing my perspective. There we go. That's a little easier to see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab, I'm going to use my bounding box again to grab everything. And then up here, this second from the right tool here is called a line. Now you have to make sure that there is nothing underneath these objects where you click them. Okay. If there's, if you, if you have it like this, where part of the object is obscured, it's going to do something different. So you need to make sure it's just your work plane behind it. But you click on this center dot, now watch the orange circle. See how it moved? It centered them. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here on the left. So you're going to do the center one here, and the center one right here. And that's going to line these two things up. So that now, that orange cylinder is directly in the center. And underneath here, you can see it is sticking out far enough. If it wasn't, we could make that bigger if we had to. Okay, so let's say you have this object and it's not big enough. You could bring it down further using the little triangle tool up here. See, I can bring it up and down. Okay, I can also grab the white box, make this taller, and then bring it down more. Now it's sticking all the way out the top. And it's sticking all the way out the bottom. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to convert this cylinder into a hole. And then I'm going to highlight everything again. And then I'm going to click the group tool to combine them again. And as before, it's going to cut this hole out of this object. And there you go. We now have the same 12 millimeter hole that was in the other object that is now in this object. You notice the hole is a little dirty. I could make that cleaner if I want, so let me show you how to do that. So I'm gonna make this little back step here. Now I don't actually need this hole because we know now that it is 12 millimeters. So again, I'm gonna grab my work plane tool and I'm gonna drag it into that bottom here of this cavity, right into the bottom of that cavity, not down there, but here. Then I'm gonna grab a cylinder and I'm going to drop a cylinder right on that spot. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to increase my number of sides to 64. And then I'm going to click on this corner box right here. If you click on the corner box right there, it will give you the dimensions. And you can click on that dimension. It says 20. That's the default. And you can type in 12. And it's going to shrink it to 12. And I'm going to go over here to this 20 here. I'm going to change that to 12. There, now I have a 12 by 12 cylinder. 
I'm going to make this cylinder taller. And then I'm going to grab my little cone up top here and I'm going to drop it into the model. And now we bring it vertical again. If, you're, if this work plane is getting in your way, again, drag it onto an empty area of the board and that will make it go to the bottom. Highlight everything with your bounding box. Go to your Align tool again. And once again, click on your, your centers here and here. Center it this way. Center it this way, which puts that directly in the center. It's sticking out the top. It's sticking out the bottom. So it's going to cut a hole all the way through. Again, select it. Turn it into a hole by clicking here. Bounding box, select everything. Once again, use your group tool, group them. Give it time to process, and there you go. Now you have a nice, neat, clean 12 millimeter hole, which is the same size as the hole that's in these other parts. And now you can export this. The bottom is flat, so that's already printable. Let's call this rim with hole, rim with hole. Now, whatever you call the files up here in that little box there, that's what it will name them when you save them. We come up here and we select the export button. We select the selected shape. That's what we have picked, our selected shape here. And we click STL. And it's gonna bring up a save dialog box. We're gonna click save file. It's gonna save it as rimwithhole.stl and it should save to your standard downloads folder. And if I go to my downloads, I now have a new file called Rim with Hole. And if I bring that file up in Simplify 3D, or whatever slicer you want to use, it doesn't matter. Here we go. Now we have the rim imported into our slicer, and it has the hole in it. And that's how you do that. Very, very simple. If you need to make a simple change like that, if the part isn't hyper complex, because you're going to lose some resolution, you can see how the resolution got decimated a little bit here from bringing it into Tinkercad. But for something like a rim, you're not going to notice that printing it. And now we have our part with a hole. That's how you do it. If you have any questions, there are plenty of tutorials available for Tinkercad. You could also ask me down below. While I'm not an expert, I do have a decent amount of experience with it, and I can try to help you. And that's also basically the same simple technique that I used to make this. I just keep creating shapes and cutting holes and adding holes and splitting objects. It's a little complicated as far as your decision tree. You have to do a lot of things. But um, it's a very simple user interface that allows you to do some surprisingly complex things without having to learn complicated software. You can learn this software in an hour. You know, just in one evening, you could learn to be very proficient with Tinkercad and do very simple modifications very quickly. That's it. You guys have a great night. I will see you all later.